Okay, welcome to another episode. Today we're checking the EVAP canister purge control valve. Now let me show you where that's located. That's this guy right here. Let me turn on a light. And as you can see, it lives right here on top of the plenum. And then there's one, two, and there's a third vacuum line in the back. What I'll do is I'm going to remove this from the, uh, from the motor here. There's two 10 millimeter bolts, and a couple of hose clamps. We'll put it on the bench and I'll show how you can quickly test this valve uh, because if it is not, it can give you various EVAP codes. For example, 443 is one of them. So we can really pinpoint if this is a problem uh, for your specific vehicle. Now we have the control valve on the bench here, and what you want to do is apply vacuum to this uh, to this valve. Now, what you want to see is that the valve holds pressure. If it holds pressure, it's in good shape. If it does not hold pressure, then you have a crack or a leak somewhere, and it needs to be replaced. Now, I'm going to keep these rubber hoses intact, just because when we do the uh, vacuum test, I want to make sure that these rubber hoses hold the pressure. Because if there's a leak in one of these hoses, of course, that will also give us a trouble code, for example, P0443 is one of them. So we want to make sure that everything here can hold the vacuum. Now, if you don't have a vacuum tester, you can just simply blow into the, uh, into the canister. Of course, I would probably wrap this maybe with a paper towel or something around it because these things are really dirty. Or just use new hosing. But you can do that if you do not have a vacuum tester. So now we have the vacuum pump hooked up to the control valve. And whenever you purchase one of these vacuum pumps, they give you a ton of accessories to use in a lot of different applications. So what we want to do is apply a little bit of vacuum. Okay, that's plenty. And as you can see, the needle is holding. So that verifies that this control valve is working correctly. Now another test you can do is if you blow air into this guy right here, it would come out the other end through this hose, this rubber hose. And that's the way it's supposed to work on your car. When there's vacuum applied, air can travel from this guy to this guy, or vacuum can travel from freely from this guy to this guy. When it's closed, then vacuum cannot travel through. And that's the way this is supposed to work. Let's also check this guy, and we'll check this other guy as well. Okay guys, so now we have this vacuum pump hooked up to this hose. Let's apply a little bit of vacuum. That's plenty. As you can see, the needle is holding, so that verifies that the rubber hosing as well as the control valve is in good shape. So let's go ahead and also check this guy as a last step. And let me just bring this a little bit closer, apply a little bit of vacuum. That's fine. And again, the needle is steady. So we've tested every port. There are three ports on this control valve and every one is holding pressure. So as you can see, a pretty painless procedure. I do recommend on getting one of those vacuum pumps because they are really nice to have if you do plan on doing your own auto repair. And again, if you don't, you can just blow into it, but just make sure you clean off uh, the surface area because this stuff is all carbon build up and it's pretty nasty. Uh, but get yourself a vacuum pump. They're inexpensive, keep it in your garage, and it's just nice to have. If you'd like to see further repair videos, just visit us on carsandtoys.net.